Hello everyone, David Giglio here with Ozen Engineering and in this video I show you how to model an axial flux motor using the magnetic transient solver in ANSYS Maxwell. Let's first take a look at the excitation circuit where DC voltage is input three phase inverter which produces three phase square wave voltages where switches one and four are for phase A, switch pair three and six are for phase B, switch pair five and two are for phase C, and no switches in a pair of a phase are open or closed at the same time. The sequence of the closing are such as switches one and six are closed, and then one and two, and then three and two, and then three and four, then five and four, five and six, and then repeats one and six, and so on. The cycle continues. And here is a, a plot of the control voltages uh, for the pulses where I, I, as I mentioned, the pairs, five and six, one and six, one and two, three, two, three, four, five, four, five, six. And we can use um, time-based control pulses or position control um, for the pulses, where the for position control for the pulses, the switches, in, the switches open and close based on the relative position of the magnets um, relative to the coils, right? So let's take a look at the simulation results. So at this instant, the switches one and six are closed. Phase A has a maximum positive current and phase B has the maximum negative current, okay? And at this instant, we see this is phase, for this phase A coil, current is clockwise. It produces a downward field which attracts the magnet shown in blue, which has a downward field, right? These fields are, are attractive. So it will um, induce a torque on the blue magnet to rotate in the positive Z direction, where positive torque is defined as the torque points up and the rotation is aligned with um, the curl of the other fingers, okay? And this phase, um, phase A field, right? The field produced by phase A, this downward field will repel the magnet shown in red, which has its field pointing upward. So this phase A coil, coil attracts the blue magnet, repels the red magnet. Overall, both torques are in the positive Z direction, right? Same direction torque, same force direction as well. Similarly, for this phase B coil, right, the, based on the current it, it's, it's shown here, it produces a downward field, right? Us, using the right hand rule for electromagnetic fields, this downward field from the coil, phase B, will repel the magnet shown in red, which has its fields pointing upward, right? So down, downward fields from the coil repels the upward field in the magnet shown in red. So this phase B coil will repel the red magnet to rotate in the positive V direction and will attract the magnet shown in blue, which has this field pointing downwards, right? The downward field of the blue, blue magnet will try to align with the downward field from the phase um, B coil. So <clears throat> that is, this is true for all the magnet, magnets all around the, the motor, right? So the, all the magnets either experience an attractive or repulsive force, and all of these forces work together to produce the positive torque in the motor. However, let's let's look at the the 1D plot for the torque. So we see that there is a transient for the torque, right? Initial torque is zero, and then it ramps up and it has a ripple at the steady state. The reason why it has a ripple is because the number one, the, the windings have impedance. So even though the voltage is applied to the windings, the maximum current will not be obtained at that instant where the switch is closed and voltage is applied to the windings, right? It takes some some time for the winding um, current to rise and then and then again for the current to fall, rise and fall. So that's why we have this ripple um, in, in the torque. And also torque varies with the, with the position of the, 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 the stator coils and the magnetic magnets, okay? So when a, when a coil has a maximum current and it's in between magnets, 
that is where the maximum torque is obtained. All right. So because the torque has ripple, the power output also has ripple. And in this um, example, this design, the output power is 2.2 kilowatts, right? Around. So for for this for this um, design, 2.2 kilowatts, the the rotor and stator diameters are 120 millimeters, right? So for this size, this is a reference. For this size motor, we get 2.2, about 2.2 kilowatts. And this is a half symmetry model, meaning that there is symmetry with respect to a plane, in this case, the XY plane. This is actually a double rotor axle flux motor where um, the full mo motor will have an equal rotor um, mirrored with respect to the XY plane, right? So because symmetry is applied, we're only modeling half of the model. We still obtain the full results in half in no, no, less time, right? So the full model will take longer to solve. Half symmetry applied, we solve half the model, obtain the, still obtain the full results. And we see the time. Let's see. So it, for this model, half symmetry, it took 28 minutes and 32 seconds, right? Now, I also have to show you a quarter symmetry model. So um, in addition to the symmetry with respect to the axis, in the XY plane, right, cutting through the um, axis of the motor, and, you know, we also have the rotational symmetry using the independent and dependent boundary conditions, which formerly known in, in engineering in general, independent, formerly known as master, dependent, known as slave. But this is now the term, terminology used in engineering, independent, dependent. Um, so we have the, the half symmetry from the from the XY plane, mirror symmetry, and another half symmetry for the 180 degree rotational symmetry, okay? So half and half is a quarter, right? You multiply together, right? Quarter symmetry. So we saw in the, in the half symmetry model it took 28 minutes and 32 seconds. Here for the quarter symmetry model, look, 17 minutes, 37 seconds. So it's, so we can imagine for, for a full model, right, would take around an hour, like so, somewhere around that time frame. It's not going to take many hours. It's not going to take days. To model an axial flux motor, we can use the quarter symmetry, if symmetry exists, obtain a solution in 17, around 17 minutes, right? Let's round it off uh, half symmetry, half an hour. Let's, let's say a full model could be in, in, a, in an hour time frame, right? So you can obtain full results for an axial flux motor in, in this reference, right? Let's say um, the, the diameter, 120 millimeters, we, for a motor producing output power 2.2 kilowatts. So for a larger motor, it'll take you know, longer time. So if you want, for example, double the power, it could be, for an example, approximately double the time. That's just like an estimate. So it's not going to take many hours. You know, we, this is a 3D model, FEA results. You could obtain results in a reasonable time. Um, you know, within, within a day, you could, you could run multiple simulations. And you, we could run, set up optometrics um, to sweep variables of the geometry, the excitation, the frequency. You want to, you want to see how the, the motor performance changes with um, varying um, geometry. It could be the width of the magnets, the, the, the thickness of the magnets, the, the rotor stator diameters, right? The inner outer diameters, the, the number of turns in the, in the coils. You could vary whatever parameter you want, run a, par run a parametric sweep, and, and have multiple solutions for giving um, for a given sim for a given project, right? We see many variations of the of the of the, of the design in, the, in one project file, right? And the last thing is we can use RM Expert to automate the geometry and circuit excitation creation. 
where, for example, we can, sh in, in RMX, we use templates to specify which kind of axial flux motor we want to model and create, create the FAA model for. In this case, it's a double-sided rotor. Um, and then we could choose the circuit settings, right? So how to, and we could show, show here the, the outer diameter, inner diameter. So this is just an initial design um, step, right? And use ARM Expert to initiate the design and modeling. Then in, in Maxwell, we can use CAD operations on the top to modify the geometry. We can use the Maxwell circuit to edit the excitation circuit, however we desire. And that is all for this video. So contact us to learn about our simulation capability and request a demonstration for us to show you how we can help you with your engineering projects. We provide training to use ANSYS tools and offer consulting services. If you like this video, which I know you do like it, give it a like, subscribe to our Ozen YouTube channel, Ozen Engineering. Thank you very much and have a nice day.